Hi there. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Microsoft Outlook 2007. Uh, a lot of people are asking about this, as many companies are asking that uh, people have the skill when they apply for jobs. So I'm hoping that in this video, in around 30 to 40 minutes, I'm going to give you the basic idea of Outlook and also show you how you can set it up at home so you can practice with it if you had to take a test. Uh, it's not very difficult, it's one of the very easy things to learn and once you have an understanding of this video you can put on your resume that you know Microsoft Outlook when you apply for a work. So the best way to set it up is if you have a Gmail account or a Hotmail account you can set up Outlook with that. So what you are doing is, what Outlook does is, it's just a way to fetch your email from somewhere so you can have one outlook that can be set up with your gmail hotmail and any other accounts uh, of your email and they all come in one place and you have a copy of your email on your computer so if you did not have internet connection you can still access your emails and check what you received and and the replies you've done it also has options to set up calendar appointment task and that's why a lot of companies are using it because they also happen to use one of Microsoft's program called Microsoft Exchange and Microsoft Outlook is the way to get your emails from Microsoft Exchange so before you start setting up your email with uh, from Gmail with Outlook what you need to do is get some information so all you do is type go to Google type Gmail Outlook 2007 and you'll get this help for Gmail, the first link. Click on it and you'll see all the information you need to know. So make sure you follow each and every step exactly the way it is set up. Because if you miss even one single check mark or one simple information, it may not work. So you have to start with the step one, step two, step three, and they've given you all kind of screenshots with information that you need to use. And I'm going to go through this to show it to you as to how you go about it. But you need all of this information that they are showing you. So you might want to keep this window open when you do that. The same way you can also set it up instead of Gmail. You can look for Hotmail Outlook 2007. And there is a link from office.microsoft.com about a connector that allows you to set things up very easily and what the connector does is you can actually share your Hotmail calendar with your Outlook calendar so if you make any changes on your Hotmail they automatically will show up on your Outlook and if you make any changes on your Outlook calendar it automatically shows up on your Hotmail calendar so it's a nice feature that they have unfortunately Yahoo free email accounts Yahoo does not allow that uh, to be used with Outlook from the last time when I checked. If you had in Canada we have this company called Rogers which uses Yahoo. Now that email account you can use with Outlook. So I'm going to use my own personal, one of my personal addresses. So I'm going to just go ahead and start Microsoft Outlook and start setting it up. So as soon as I launch Outlook it's going to come up with a startup and now it's asking me to set up so I'm just going to click next it's asking me do you want to configure Outlook to connect to internet and I want to for email if you did not want to you could say no and use it without the email functionality so you'll get at least some idea but without it now if you did not have Microsoft Outlook you could download a 30-day trial just to get used to it so get the 2007 as there's a big difference from 2007 and 2010 the way they look the basic ideas are the same I'm gonna click next again now here I get to type my name so I type my name the email address that I have and my password And then on the bottom, you see the option it says manually configure. Now, in some cases, when you hit next, Outlook may try to configure it for you and it may or may not work. So you're taking a chance. Even the Gmail instruction asks you to do a manual configuration. So I'm going to click next. 
and I need to do an internet email connection. For business, they usually use the Microsoft Exchange. For us, the email part is good. Click Next. Now here, some of my information is already there. I'm using a POP3 account. There is another account called IMAP, which just has a little bit more advanced functionality. I'm just going to stick with the POP. Now I'm just filling up the incoming mail server and the outgoing mail server information. Now this information, you get it when you do the search on the internet. I'm typing what I have from my provider. You have to type exactly what they want you to do. I know this by heart now, so I'm just typing it. You can set up for, remember, your password information if you would like to do that. If not, then just remove the check mark. You also have to go to more settings because there are some more options. Click more. Now in this window, I go to the second information, outgoing server. And I need to check mark my outgoing server, SMTP requires authentication. If this one check mark's not there, I may not be able to send my emails. Connection. There's nothing to do there. Advanced. Now in the advanced, I need to change this outgoing server number to 587 because that's what my company wants me to use. And on the bottom, there's an option where it says leave a copy of message on the server. Now if you don't put a check mark here, when Outlook connects to your email for the first time, it's going to download all your inbox. And when it does that, it might delete all your emails on your inbox and there are a couple of ways that it does that I think in Gmail too you can just say that don't delete my emails when Outlook gets it but I like to put a note here as well and I also say that remove from server when deleted from the delete item so when I delete an email it goes to the trash or the delete folder once I remove it from the delete folder or I empty the delete folder then the email will be removed from the server I'm just going to click OK and I'm going to hit test account settings and it's going to do a test and it's going to come up saying completed for both when it does that now I've got it right this is exactly what I want it to be click close and I have to hit next now so now just click next and I'll finish it's going to do some configuration and it's asking me to type my name. Click OK. It's asking you the question whether you want Outlook to be your default for your email, calendar, and contacts. What it does is that when you go on the internet and you see an email address on any website and you click on that email address it will automatically launch Outlook and the person's email address will be in the TO section. I'm just going to say yes if, I'm, if you're planning to use this. Now this is something to do with social networks. I'm just going to cancel it for now. I'm just going to expand this window. And as it is doing that, it started receiving all the emails. So I had just left a few emails in my inbox so that I, it didn't take a long time because it might take a while if you had hundreds and hundreds of emails. And you start seeing that right now it says I have three emails in my inbox and they are listed here in this section and I can read them on the right hand side here, the email. And you see a yellow envelope on the emails that means I haven't read it. As soon as I click on it, now they have the envelopes, they show as opened. That means now the inbox says there are none new emails. So you have the inbox where you can go to check your email. Now the first thing you can do is you can set up the way things look. So like this up here, Microsoft Office Outlook, if you don't want it, I can just close it and put this down so I get a bigger window here. You can even close this to-do bar so that I get a little bigger window to see stuff and I'll show you again how to bring it back. I can go to view 
and there is the to do bar if I wanted to bring that back reading pane which is right now the reading option is on the right hand side if I want I can put it to the bottom I like it on the bottom just to see it view there is also an option that if you did not if you wanted auto preview so all the emails you get a little bit of a message from them so there is a little bit of information available view auto preview and you can remove that so yeah, there's a lot of different options that you can look at and you can customize it in, and find exactly the way you want it to be. So you can use the toolbars for that. Now if I wanted to read any of the emails in a bigger window, I can just double click on it. Now from this window, I can either hit reply if there were more than one person in the email that I was communicating with, I can use reply to all. Be careful. You don't want to reply to people you don't want to. And you can forward the email. You can also delete. And you can from here itself move it to a folder. I'll show you in a minute how to create a folder. And if this individual was somebody who was like a spammer who was just sending crap, you can just hit block sender. And you can even click on the office button in the left hand corner and then choose print to print the email and you can close it. You can also delete the email from using this delete button and you can highlight multiple ones. You can click control, click on the next one, hit delete so both of them will be deleted. Click on the first one hold the shift key click on the last one so everything in the middle will be highlighted and now I can hit delete so I'm just gonna click on this middle one and I'm gonna hit delete and when I click delete on an email it is not completely gone it goes into the delete items if I click on the delete items on the left hand side now when I right click on it it's asking me a question I just wanna say no to this I get the option it says MT deleted items now when I MT this deleted items now the email is gone for sure from Outlook and also it will sync with my server when it syncs and it will force the email and delete it from the server too that's the setting that I have used there is the send and receive option which you can force to get your email by default it takes like 30 minutes and I'm going to show you how you can change that. It will check every 30 minutes but you can change that settings. Now if I want to move it back I can just even come here left click and hold it and drag it to the inbox and now it's in the inbox. If you want to write a email you just click on the new button on the left hand side and it opens this window and you can type the email address, the subject, and then type the notes. You can even attach a file if you wanted to attach a file. And I'm also going to show you how you can have your signature that you can add to your email that's on the bottom of your email with your names and the confidentiality your privacy uh, messages and things like that you can use these buttons here to create high importance so like uh, at least in personal emails it, they, this might not be a big deal but in the in the business environment you can actually use this button so that the individual who's receiving it will see that information that this is high importance so he or she would read that message right away and, and respond back to you as needed. They also have the insert button here on the top which can again have the attach file options, you can insert a picture, you can also add date, they also have an option to add special symbols like the copyright symbol and some more symbols that you can check out if you needed to add something. In the options tab, 
they also have an option which says show BCC so I can click it so I get the BCC option now if you've been using email for a while the B, you know the BCC stands for blind carbon copy and the idea is that say you have want to send an email to five people and out of that the one person is the direct receiver and the other three are indirect so you could put them either in the CC the other three people or the four people in this case everybody will see everybody's email address but if you put the emails in the BCC the person who's receiving the email will not know that you emailed to someone else so I usually use it a lot uh, only when I'm using it for forwarding stuff so I don't want anybody to know other people's email addresses so if you are ever forwarding it try to put it in the BCC there is never a need to put everybody's email in the TO section so once you're in the option you put the show BCC the BCC will be available all the time you can also request a delivery receipt that means once the email is received you'll get an email back saying their email has been received. You can also request a read receipt. That is, when the person opens the email, they will get a message saying that you've requested a read receipt. If they say yes to that message, you will automatically get an email saying that, okay, that person has opened the email, so now you know they read your message. So it's a good option to use if you needed to use it. So I'm just going to say close it. Oh, before I do that, there's a delayed delivery option, which is if you wanted to, instead of sending it right now, you could choose do not deliver before. So you can set a time and it will try to send it at that time. And you can even send the importance of things. But you want to make sure if you do that, you want to have Outlook open so that the message goes out. I'm just going to play X to close. It will ask me do you want to keep it. If I say yes, it will go into the draft folder. If I say no, it will be removed. I'll just say yes just to show it to you. Click yes. Now when I go to my draft, it says I have one message here. And there is my message. And I can, can double click on it and continue editing it. If I wanted to delete it, I can just use the delete button here on the top. And it is gone. I can come back to my inbox. And you can use this send and receive button here, right on the top, to force it to go and get your email and also force any email that you were trying to send. Because when you send an email, they usually come and sit in the sent items or they are waiting there to be sent out or sorry it will be in the outbox waiting to be sent out so outbox is where your emails are sitting waiting to be go going out there's also the folder sent items this is every time I reply or send an email it leaves a copy in my sent items